person who is formerly having that phone with Joe Baron. That's simple. Here we come to Pansy. Sorry, I wasn't planning to. Did you leave me for a song? Yes. Anyway. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the November 20th uh, meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Would the clerk help me with the roll call, please? Uh, Chairman Harley. I'm here. Uh, clerk Roberts is here. Mr. Hughes, no. Mr. Oichel. Here. Mr. Hammer, no. Oh, Mickey, no. Dean. Tom Dean. Uh, Ryan Allard here. Dan Silver here. Dave Edwards, nope. Yolanda is not here. All right. So there are six uh, here tonight. Everybody's participating. Uh, would somebody uh, help me by making a motion to change the agenda? I make a motion that we go out of order and take items three one and three two prior to two one. Second. Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Let's move on to item 3.1. This is a, oh, a simple application. Dr. Neil Shapiro seeking a site plan approval in accordance with section 5.2.C.1 of dental office in the uh, 1307 Silas Dean Highway, the Golf Brook Shops. <clears throat> Would the applicant join us at the microphone? Sure. Uh, start by introducing yourself and then uh, tell us what's going on. Greetings, Dr. Neil Shapiro. We currently have our dental practice at Garden Street in Old Weathersfield. We have literally busted at the seams. We have such a large patient population that we need more space. We want to be able to offer accessible parking, and we also want to be able to offer handicap accessibility as well. And this is what we're looking to do. We're looking to be able to take care of our patient population the best possible and provide the best access to care. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, let's see, is there a I think there's some paperwork here. Are you throwing stuff at me? This, this yours? All right. uh, maybe you could just uh, take an extra couple seconds and describe how many seats and such you have going into the office. Into we're the going facility. to have a total. Right now we currently have four, and we're going to be expanding that by, by you know, 33% by adding another two seats with potential for another even two after that. <coughs> so, Peter, anything in particular that we should – Take note of? Uh, not particularly. There, you have a floor plan which shows the uh, six um, uh, rooms, uh, exam rooms that are going to be occupied. There are uh, other incidental spaces for meetings and waiting areas and restrooms and, and all of those uh, types of things. Uh, they did also provide you with a copy of the site plan for the entire um, shopping center, which was done not that long ago. I think it was 2013, which shows. Um, uh, it, of particular attention is the parking calculations. So I did a memo as well to accompany that, which basically uh, summarized um, the existing conditions as uh, having uh, an excess amount of parking. Um, so uh, based on the site plan that is submitted with the application, this uh, shopping center is required to have uh, roughly 360 parking spaces, and it presently has 478 parking spaces. So there's certainly excess uh, capacity <coughs> within the uh, uh, the shopping center. If you're not familiar with the shopping center, it's the uh, space all the way, the last space all the way to the south of the center, uh, which has been a um, vegetable farm produce uh, business for the last uh, few years. Um, they are going to occupy that space. Um, there are just a few other comments. The uh, handy, uh, the, the the crosswalk. Uh, that that is in, uh, leading to the handicap ramp in front of this space has uh, you know significantly faded. So I would suggest um, that as part of this um, uh, occupancy, that the uh, uh, handicap ramps are reestablished um, and made a little uh, a little more obvious. Um, there there is now I think since the produce business went in there. Uh, a, a connection uh, to the property to the south, so people do come through along the front of the shopping center, go into that uh, the next door property, and go out at the light down there. So uh, it is now a kind of a throughway, uh, which didn't uh, wasn't necessarily the case until a couple of years ago. Now, where, uh, where are these ramps on the? 
So there's a handicap uh, ramp. The front door where the there's a handicap ramp. Is. Yeah, as you can see in the picture, which leads to the door, yeah. but there is a, a faded crosswalk there, which should be oh, okay. uh, reestablished. Okay. The okay. Just the crosswalk. No, Just the crosswalk. The, the ramp oh, okay. is the ramp appears to be fine. You don't have to put the red uh, handicap things in, huh? No. I'm not sure what the code is for, um, you know, private handicap ramps, but um, prob probably not. Yeah, I would think no. Oh, you're talking about the tactile warning yeah, strips? Yeah, tactile domes. I'm not oh, impressed yeah. with the so Yeah, okay. So I appreciate um, that. I, I knew there was some uh, paperwork. I just can't seem to find it now. Okay. It, there's the also parking. a couple of photos of the space uh, that were submitted um, for the proposed signage. This signage obviously is not subject to your review. We'll have to go through design review and through the mm -hmm. zoning officer, but I think they just wanted to give you an idea of uh, ultimately uh, where they want to put the signage. Is that black and white signage? Um, blue and white, like perhaps. It shows to us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you not... Yes or no? No, it's, it's going to be black or white or blue and white. Okay. Yeah. Um, it looks a little large to me, but other than that, maybe that's what you're allowed because you have a, a deep facility. I, I believe we were just planning on staying within the light box that they're already providing for us. So it's, we're not changing what's already there. Oh, we're just okay. using the, the, the existing perimeter, yes. Okay. How many square feet are you moving into? For 3,200. And, and what do you have now? Right now, 15. I mean, about 1,500. 1,500 of clinical space, right? It's it's two floors. I mean, we're just because it's old Weathersfield, it's been allowed because we're grandfathered, but we really dentally, needly, needlessly say, have to have sterilization on the same floor. Do you have parking issues in your existing? Space? Yes, we do. I can understand your problem. <laughs> Not that I use it, but the little park scene, it's always a problem. The parking's all in the street where you were. Correct. <clears throat> Anything else? All right, it's not a public hearing, so. Uh, I make a motion we approve application number 2003-18-Z uh, with the stipulation that they reestablish the markings on the handicap ramp in front of the entrance. Second. Any, dis any discussion? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Good luck. Thank you very Good much. Luck. Good, One go question do it. for Peter. When, when are you going to be uh, moving in there? <coughs> in the spring? Um, we're looking for spring. Did yes. The, uh, Good. Did the market Good luck. have Thank like you very a, much. Where, um, one of those storage things behind it? Back. Yeah. Is that going to be gone? Yeah, okay. <coughs> Next on the agenda. The uh, a public hearing for application number 1983-18-Z, which is the town of Wethersfield. Welcome, Derek. Uh, Don't be bashful, Derek. Come on up here. Seeking an amendment to a special permit in accordance with 4.1.B.12 for the salt storage shed at Marsh Street. Yeah, really. No one will buy it. Oh, you're doing one too, huh? Do you have a presentation as well? Don't put us in the dark. Time to approve it. Uh, something or just play with words? Put the screen. <laughs> <laughs> shine it, it's shine it's it with bright light in Tom's dark. eyes. Yeah. It's like the eye. Like a dentist chair. Is this better or is this? <laughs> Hey, hey, just, just, uh, hey guys, doctor, yes. you, there's no need to hang around if you don't want to. You're yeah. free to go. We enjoy your company. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. you hear one of like about salt the salt sheds. sheds. Yes. Yes. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Good. good luck. Hey, guys. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Derek Greger. I'm the Weathersfield Town Engineer. Um, here tonight to present a very similar project to one you had seen uh, earlier this year for a new salt storage shed facility at our physical services garage located at 100 Marsh Street. Um, you may remember we have an existing wooden shed out there. It's in very poor structural condition. 
It's a three-sided structure. It's exposed to the elements. The moisture over the winters uh, causes the salt to clump quite a bit, causes issues with our equipment uh, when applying it to the roads. When we had come initially, uh, we had come in for approval of a 80-foot wide by 90-foot long structure. Um, once we got into getting some bid prices, we reduced the size to a 70-foot wide by 80-foot long structure, which is what we're proposing at this time. We had bid the project over the summer. Um, we, had, we found after we had gotten approval here, we got into some more engineering that we had very poor soil conditions, and that combined with the fact that we had some grade differential uh, near the existing salt shed where the new one was proposed initially um, was driving up the cost of the concrete foundation. So we did bid the project. We got bid prices that exceeded our available funding. Um, so we had pulled back at the time and looked at alternate options uh, with the smaller building size and another location on the site that uh, might be more economical for us. So this plan is very similar to the plan I had showed you last time I was here. Um, it's an aerial view of the site. You see I-91 over to the right, Marsh Street's up to the top of the sheet. Uh, you may remember this entire site is floodplain. It extends across Marsh Street. Um, so we have tried to keep the elevation of the salt storage a little bit above existing grade to the extent we can. Um, what you see down here in this area of the site is the existing salt shed in the yellow outline. That's the wooden structure. The orange-red uh, structure was the 80-foot by 90-foot structure. I had come in front of you before uh, earlier this year for approval with the door facing to the north on that structure. We're looking at moving the structure northwest a little bit. Um, it'll be rotated so the door opens to the, is on the opening is on the west side here, and it's the yellow structure you see. So we're just moving it northwest and we're rotating it uh, approximately 90 degrees. You may remember uh, the old shed has telephone supports holding up the back wall because it's in such poor structural condition. And one of the things we had um, discussed when I was here last time was that we had met with DEP, you know, obviously this being in floodplain. It's the current facility is permitted under the existing permit. We had been told earlier this year that they were going to be issuing a new permit at the end of this year that may preclude us from putting it in the floodplain and recommended that we have it built by the end of the year. Uh, which was the rush to kind of get something put together and out to bid this summer. Since then, they have said that they've delayed issuance of their permit until possibly next year, or may even be later. They've said even with that permit, there's no guarantee that we wouldn't be able to put the shed here. But they basically extended the timeline. So that uh, they told us that over the summer. So that allowed us uh, this opportunity to kind of pull back, look at things again, see if we can um, get a better project at a more uh, economical price for the town um, that fits more within our budget. These are some pictures that you had seen last time. This is the existing structure. It's open on one side, as I said. It's exposed to the elements and the moisture, which causes a lot of problems with the salt. Um, right now, the salt, when it's delivered, it's dumped outside the structure and pushed in with equipment. Um, with the new shed, we're looking to have that ability inside the structure itself. This is the back side of the shed. I mentioned the telephone poles for support. Just an isometric view of what we're looking at, a similar structure. Um, you, you notice the ex concrete walls at the bottom. The intent is to, for those to extend 10 feet above grade as salt containment and then to have a uh, fabric-covered steel canopy structure sitting on top of it. This is just a view now, western view, looking at a 38 by 20 foot wide door opening. Um, the idea with that is we want the delivery trucks to be able to back fully into the facility, fully extend their dump bodies and pull out um, in a way that we can load as much salt within the structure as possible and not do what we do now, which is dump it on the exterior and push it up into the structure. It's just a rear view of what the facility would look like. Here's an isometric view. Um, we're looking at, right now, we do have bids for this exact structure. Um, we are evaluating if we are going to go back out uh, for bids on, on another type of structure or stay with what we have. Um, the company that had bid on this is working with their supplier right now to see if they can hold the bid prices from last year into this to coming year since we had to delay the project for other reasons. Another view. Always gets hung up here for me. You see kind of an inside look of it. There'll be a truss, truss design. It'll be white like that, so it'll be very bright. Um, in, in the daytime, and then 
This is the, the revised site plan that you had received as part of the submittal. We're looking to store approximately 2,000 tons of salt. Um, looking at it a little closer, we feel like with the smaller size of building, taking 10 feet off the length and width, we could still accommodate that. That will get us through most of a winter season on a typical winter without having to resupply. <clears throat> we had the geotechnical analysis done at the new location. Uh, what you're looking at here on the site plan, uh, you can see in the yellow-orange, this is the new building. Uh, the, the dark um, hidden dashed lines you see here was the old building location, which you can see was a little bit larger. Um, we do have very similar soil conditions out here, but the grading works a lot better, so we don't end up with situations where the salt's stored up here, and behind the salt we have an opening or drop down of a few feet, which we had before, which was really driving up the foundation cost because they had to retain the salt at this elevation and then also the overturning effect. Um, so this is kind of taken away with this layout. Everything will be at grade. Um, basically, the salt uh, grade that is stored on inside the structure will be almost the same as the, the uh, grade around the structure. So we've taken out that retaining wall um, characteristic that we needed with the other location that we had. As part of the project, which you see in the dark shaded areas here, um, are areas where we have very poor pavement conditions or pavement conditions that have just deteriorated to nothing. So similar to the last project, we are looking to do some reconstruction out in front of the shed where we'll have these delivery vehicles coming in, turning around, backing up, and also our um, town vehicles coming in and uh, getting loaded during storms. Similar to the last time, um, the way the stormwater runoff is being handled is it all drains down towards the front of the structure just naturally. Um, then we're going to have a swale in front of the structure that will push it through a, a grass line swale that will go around um, the south side of the structure and then down the eastern property line to a sediment basin that, was, um, that will be installed to help collect some of the sediment and salt that does migrate from the area. Um, but the thought is because of the size of the structure, you know, when we're full, we're, we'll have to do some loading outside. But as it, as it starts to go down, we might be able to, we plan to be able to back the trucks in and load them inside so we can reduce the amount of salt. Um, you know, that would be, be washing away um, and have a better opportunity to, to clean it. Having a rather, right now they're on gravel or it'll be on pavement, it'll be easier to clean up. As I stated, this whole site is in the floodplain. Um, we have looked at it. This is, uh, we've balanced grades, so we're in a net cut, a slight cut, so we're not affecting flood storage capacity um, with the construction of the new structure that, as I said, is a little bit smaller than what was originally approved. So as far as the schedule for this project, um, as I stated earlier, we are looking to have it built in the spring of 2019. Um, that way we have plenty of time to get everything done and situated before the fall comes around when salt deliveries are coming, as well as being ahead of the potential DEE, per DEE permit that may take effect. Um, as I said, this is the existing structure is kind of a safety issue. Um, it's a concern for staff just given its condition. You know, this is an essential operation for the town. Obviously, we need to be, have the ability to be out on the streets applying salt, uh, particularly when we're getting snow and ice in November, which we were not anticipating. So it probably worked out best that we weren't because we would have still been in construction had we tried to proceed with what we had. Um, there are no DEP permits required. We are keeping them updated on what, where we are in our design and our plans, although they don't require any formal permits. Uh, the project has been approved by Historic District Commission Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, we went to Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Commission last week and got their approval for um, erosion control and working in the floodplain. Right now, the intent is to rebid the project this winter. Um, in addition to the design changes we made with the new revised plan, um, we're also hoping that the uh, bid pricing will be a little more competitive in the winter. When we originally bid it, it was as late as June. A lot of contracts at that point have already booked for the year. So we got a few responses, but we're hoping by putting it out in the winter when contractors are looking to fill their schedule for the upcoming year, we might get more competitive pricing. So the intent would be to build, uh, bid it this winter and have a spring start, um, which we estimate for all the site work, putting in the foundation and then putting in the canopy structure is going to be an 8 to 12 week process. So I'd be happy to answer any questions anyone may have. George? Yeah. Uh, what's, what's that yellow line around the whole outside? That is the property line. That's the property line? Okay. Yes. That's really? Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Um, the light that you described, where is it and what, what's it going to look like? 
for what you've said. Oh, for lot. lighting the parking lot? Lighting out in the parking lot, yeah. Yep. Uh, what we're looking at is uh, right now there are uh, utility poles. There's two. There's one just south of the existing shed. Uh, there's one a little bit to the east, and then there's one up here on the north side. Um, our intention is to not utilize these and put in a couple of um, uh, light posts here with floodlights that would flood out into just this open area here in front, which gets the most use during a storm and at night um, for, for lighting. So those would be floodlights shining be down. So yeah, we're looking at one on each corner right now to shine down and just light up that area when needed at night. Uh, well, well, once you do all that gray area, repave it, that everything on the site down there, I hate to say this, pre pretty much be paved? Um, or do you have some the area... Other than where the, you know, where the old one goes out. I mean, you're not going to do much with that down in there except grass it or something. Yeah, right now the existing pavement extends kind of down to the center of the new structure. It's old and broken up beyond that, so it's more gravel at this point. Right. So there's a little bit in this rectangle here of new pavement area going in. Other than that, the areas to the north are already paved. Um, it would just be there in poor condition. In this area, this open area down here at the bottom where the existing building is and then extending at the bottom southern end of the site would all be left as gravel and not paved. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, so you, actually, you said you moved it northwest. You moved it northeast. Northeast, right? yeah. I misspoke. Screwed up my directions here. It must, must be my age, I think. Right? Well, you caught me. Good catch. The second time. Yeah, it makes sense. Oh. What? Second. No, I, I thought it was and you moved it so, so that way. You know? No, east is right. the right. It's east toward 91, yeah, right? It is. You know, I hope. You got it. Yeah. So, so I don't mean a bit. I don't mean to be sticky, but you did say that. I thought maybe I was misreading something. No, that's it for me. Thank you. Yeah. So none of the um, <clears throat> none of the graphics showed a structure going from ten feet up. Is the skin just hiding what otherwise would be a concrete wall in some of the uh, sample drawings? Yeah, Probably. let me see if I can get this to come back up. That or was that the foundation? So, so we're talking about a ten-foot foundation wall. Like when I look, when yeah, I look at these that, pictures, that don't show it. It would be more of what you see here. A little bit of an overlap. Okay. Oh, so so like. the way it's been designed thus far is um, it's a little hard to see on this, but the steel columns that support the truss are going to sit on buttresses that stick out beyond the wall. So the vertical wall would be here, and then there'll be buttresses at each column location to support the load. So the actual, there's some overlap, about a four-foot vertical overlap where the columns will extend down to the buttresses, and the 10-foot uh, wall would be in front of it. And so <clears throat> what, what you're saving, because the geek in me is just kind of trying to figure out what you, what you did with the, the foundation, on the old site, Look, you know, assume that's the back of the building. There was actually vertical wall going down because of the grades in the back, and you get to eliminate that going over on the other side. We were fighting grade because the grade was grading from the uh, as it faced north from the front of the structure to the back. We needed the inside to, to grade the other way, so we had probably about a three foot drop. Um, and then once we got into design, given the soils, the structural engineer was explaining now they've got additional load to accommodate. Um, so the footings just got bigger than we anticipated. I think what's you know what's driving it the most is there are you know this is an old this is an old site and the floodplain soils aren't great. Mm -hmm. um, we do have um, you know our plan is we've had a geotechnical study done. They've done borings. We have a geotechnical engineer that's been looking at it, and uh, we feel that we will have to take out some unsuitable, but some of the material that's there um, should be suitable to remain, and that is our intent to, to, to not overdo it, but just to get enough that would, uh, you know, accommodate the structure, obviously, for any settlement, something like that. Besides the price, are you giving up on um, accessibility, given that the uh, orientation is different, the trucks coming in? No, and actually, you know, when, when we kind of went back and revisited it, um, physical services staff felt like that might actually work better for them. It gives them a little more room rather than that um, bottom right corner of the site, the southeast corner. Uh, Mr. Oikel. Probably the first picture. Yeah, let me go. Yeah, perfect. 
same, same thing here. So rather than, you know, this, this big structure here kind of blocking, you know, it kind of cuts off a lot of this area. It'll be more open down here. Um, so they felt this might actually work better for them. Um, like I said, it's a little smaller, but we still feel we can get the salt uh, volume that we were looking for anyway and cut down on some costs that way. Thanks. Anything else? Just a point of curiosity. It looks like the new site, is, once, once you finish the grading, you've got the foundation in and so forth in the floor, that the floor level of this will be about a foot higher than the floor <coughs> level of the original uh, replacement building you had proposed earlier this year? Um, I, I, I believe the other one was about, this is elevation 23. Um, I think the other one was 23, 23 and a half. Um, the grade that's coming through here now at 22 is just us tying into it. So I think it's about the same because we were, we're bringing up the grade about a foot above where it sits now. It sits around elevation 22 currently. So we were trying to raise that a little bit. Obviously, can't, you know, can't raise it too much because then our costs go way up, and plus we are also more impact in the floodplain. So we're trying to kind of balance those. But it will be a little bit higher than it is now. Um, you know, this being in the floodplain, our discussions with DEP, um, if there was a flood coming and we felt this was going to be an issue, um, we, we would move the salt off site if needed. But generally what they do is they try to utilize all the salt as much as they can at the end of the winter. So they aren't, you know, storing, they wouldn't be storing it full all, all summer, winter, spring, you know, spring, summer, fall, when we might most likely to have those kinds of events. Um, it'd be full for the winter and then they try to use as much as they can. So we'll manage it like we have, you know, historically. George? Yeah, I just want to say something positive at this point. I, I think. Uh, God forbid. I think it's it's an improvement, Eric. I think you're lucky that maybe the bid came in the difficult for you last year because I think this location is better. You, I think it's improved. I think it's higher slightly. Maybe you're half a foot or something. But the point being, I think back where it was. I, I didn't like it back in there, but I, you know, I don't know physically how you, your people felt about it down in there, but I would think this is much more accessible and will be much better for you. Yeah, I mean, and this may not be a fair question for you, it's just curiosity. Um, do you or does physical services or public works foresee that you know in the next five or ten years there are going to be changes in what people are allowed to put on roads you know or is it going to be salt for essentially the life of this structure because I know the last few years you know the town's been experimenting with all kinds of hazardous substances on the roads and I just didn't know whether you know we we're going to build something and then three years from now it'll be outlawed it's a fair question. I mean, in my experience, I'm not aware of any intention to change salt. I mean, that's a pretty um, predominant way of treating roads. Um, I know the town here and other towns have tried, like, brine solutions and such. Um, although, speaking to our staff, they've tried it. They don't anticipate wanting to do that. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not aware at this time of any intent that there might be something else we'll be doing. Um, my guess is it will still require some kind of application to the road and we could utilize this facility. This facility also, you know, being how big it is, it does give us flexibility, when, you know, during the months we don't need salt storage to have other, to put equipment in there, to put vehicles in there. Um, so we do have some flexibility to do different things with it. And if there is another material that needs to be utilized in the future, um, this will kind of be a multifunctional uh, structure that will have lighting. Um, it, had, it will have passive ventilation. Um, I think, you know, I didn't mention it today, but it's being designed, so if we want to put a garage door on it, that large 38 by 20 foot door some point in the future to keep it warmer or for other reasons to have that, it'll be structurally framed to do that. Um, so we, that does give us some flexibility going forward. All right, thank you. All right. Nothing? Nothing? Uh, is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak? That's how they were in colonial times. <laughs> um, they, it, it's a white structure. I mean, we saw pictures of white. I guess I didn't even think about a color. Is that what historic districts saw? My understanding was that that was their preference. Um, that, that was how it was conveyed to me. Um, 
you know, there are advantages to the white as far as um, being brighter. Like I said, um, you know, they do come in different colors. However, is it I, actually translucent? Yeah, it's yeah to, it's to some extent, um, like the photo I showed you, it does. It will be brighter in there. Um, darker colors would be better for retaining heat. Uh, there's pros and cons. We kind of went with the HDC's recommendation as to what they would like to see down in that area, given what it was. They commented on that? Mm. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, these same photos you're seeing here is what was presented to them as what we're looking at. Right. Anything else, Tom? No, really. You know Tom, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. No, we, we had talked about that the last time, essentially being, you know, I think Tom Dean asked about colors and, you know, fact, particularly I when... I floated the trial balloon of, you know, some kind of camouflage. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, with the leaves off the trees, it will be highly visible. Anything else? Well, it, the it, only it, other thing I had, and I mentioned it to Derek, was the uh, light poles are 40 feet in height. Uh, our maximum is 25 feet. Um, so I pointed that out to him with the intent of exploring some other options, whether it could be attached to the building. The inside is going to be illuminated. There's going to be hanging lights. Yes. Um, so the higher a pole goes, the more likely it is to have, you know, trespass off the property. So maybe a condition should be attached that, you know, they come up with a, you know, revised lighting scheme that's more compliant with your zoning regulations. There's also a floodlight on top of it versus a light that has, um, you know, some controls on it. All right. Thanks, Pete. Any other questions for Derek? Uh, this is a public hearing. If we, we close the hearing. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Tom. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. A little discussion, or if somebody would like to just start with a motion. Make a motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any conditions? You, you said the light, uh, I don't yeah. want to word it. Well, the light poles at this point don't meet your uh, zoning requirements, so um, oh, okay. I, I suggest they come back with a lighting plan that's compliant. Uh, we do allow 25-foot high poles rather than 40-foot high poles, so something in that neighborhood um, uh, to... So this would be then conditioned upon uh, submission to staff yeah. of a... Uh, of a lighting plan that is uh, compliant with uh, our zoning regulations. Yes. Okay. Good. So it's not coming back to us. Nope. Yeah, that's that. yeah. All right. So George made us a motion and with one condition. Uh, Want to second it again, Tom? I'll second it. Terrific. Any discussion? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Go build it. Thank you. Hope we get going with it. it. Would be nice to get going with it. Yeah, well, been working on this one for a while. <clears throat> I hope your schedule works perfectly. Thanks. All right. <clears throat> so the third item is actually the first item, 2.1, a public hearing for application number 1996-18-Z. Sign regulations, uh, section 2.3, 6.3, and Appendix C. Um, so this is a continu continuation. There are six of us here. Uh, we've been going around for a long time on this topic. Uh, I'm, I'm going to end up being, I think, comfortable, unless you're going to tell me something way out of the ordinary today, um, kind of moving forward with things. So. Um, has everybody here been, <coughs> been to the majority of the meetings and feeling comfortable with what's been done so far? Peter's made a, a couple presentations, and I guess we could have him summarize it, uh, but I'm, I'm looking for a way to just get to the end game if we think we're there. This is the third time the public, at least the second time the public, this time around, but we've had other meetings on the topic, right? So, yeah, this is the third night of the year. Yeah, so... I don't know, I'm, I'm looking for suggestions on how to get to the end game and not beat this to death. Sure. Can you tell us what's different and what we're looking at here yep. compared to what we've seen before? So if you want to start with that, that would uh, be a good place. Uh, so I did um, provide you with a couple of 
uh, revised documents. The first was a uh, revised, uh, slightly revised, I'd say, set of the regulations dated November 15th. Uh, also provided you with a memo dated November 15th uh, on electronic digital signs, uh, regulations, and research from some of our surrounding communities. And then lastly, the um, spreadsheet also dated November 15th uh, that compares today's regulations with the proposed regulations. So uh, if you want to go through the um, regulations themselves, I did highlight uh, in gray um, those um, sections or, or uh, minor sections that I, I did modify. So if you want to go through those, I can just kind of quickly discuss what I did change. So if you want to do that, page one of the uh, regulation, the definition of detached sign. There was, a, there was language in there that a detached sign, um, the base of a detached sign could be no more than 12 inches uh, off of the ground so that in essence uh, you would be uh, having a really more of a monument sign. Uh, we, we didn't feel that was, was absolutely necessary, so we took that provision out to provide a little bit of flexibility. Uh, there are, um, so, uh, one of the thoughts we had is if, in, for example, in the historic district where you have simply two posts and let's just call it a colonial looking sign with two, uh, two legs to it, uh, the way this was defined, uh, that would not be permitted. So we took that regulation out uh, because there are other sign types that uh, wouldn't comply with that standard and we think there are other regulations elsewhere in the regula regulation that would cover uh, those kinds of situations. So. And, and, so, there's, and there's something to keep the height down anyways? Yes. Okay. We still have maximum height, so um, if people want to, you know, have a sign that's three or four feet base off the ground, then it, they're impacting themselves in terms of the ultimate size of the sign that they could have. So that was the minor uh, revision to that. Uh, no changes on page two. On page three, we slightly revised the definition of wall sign. There was previously a provision that uh, no wall sign could project more than 18 in inches off of the wall. Uh, we also added a whole bunch of new sign types that are basically walls, so uh, hanging signs, projecting signs, most of those wouldn't meet that 18-inch uh, criteria either, so we took that out because it conflicted with other sections uh, of the regulations. So that was the change uh, to the definition of wall sign, if that makes sense. Uh, nothing. And I guess the ramifications are that the sign would simply <coughs> extend out into, you know, off the face of the building more. And most sign companies don't do that because it costs, rather than sticking it out another six inches a foot, they're losing, it's costing more to build a sign and it's not making the sign any bigger, it's just projecting it off of the, most of them have a standard and most of them are a foot or two off of, so, I, so we also didn't think based on our experience with wall signs recently that it's, somebody's really gonna do that and project it and lose, uh, lose value for their sign, so. Um, Page four, page five, no changes. Page uh, six, just a minor change under prohibited signs. So we just added the language of, uh, unless otherwise permitted elsewhere in these regulations. So that was just a minor little clarification. Nothing on seven. Uh, page eight, based on some of our conversations at the uh, last meeting, uh, section F, signs not requiring uh, a sign permit. We, we moved some things out of this section into uh, sections that might now need to be regulated. Um, so most of the changes were minor uh, under the subsection two. There were two sections previously that dealt with um, public notice signs and signs warning of danger. So we took those two sections and combined them into this new section two. Actually, it's not new section two. We just added to that section. <coughs> Um, we added under four a 10 square foot uh, limit on uh, historical commemorative plaques, that kind of thing, just because there was no standard before. So we added 10 square feet, which is consistent with today's regulations. Uh, we added language under nine about the internally illuminated window signs. Uh, we are basically prohibiting those in the village business district, which we, we kind of talk, talked about before. Um, number 12. Um, this was the issue um, that we talked about for open, uh, open house banners, those kinds of banners, decorative banners that people put up in front of their storefronts. So we added 
uh, that one banner for each business that may hang from a pole or staff during business hours only, not larger than 12 square feet. Uh, that's basically the same regulation that exists now without um, limiting the content of the sign. Um, so that's uh, where we added, so that would cover open house uh, type flags and uh, decorative banners that might have a seasonal pattern to them or something like that. How long is it? I well, uh, now they would they can only have it outside when the business is open. Uh, that's the limitation. Uh, that's the only limitation. But that's a start up banner. Is sort of. No, it would be. Um, there are a lot of stores that have a, a flag that basically says open, or they have a flag that changes during the various seasons. It might be a leaf pattern in the fall. It might be, you know, something that reflects an Easter. Uh, uh, flag in the in the springtime, uh, we do see that happening quite a bit with uh, yeah. with businesses okay. as well as resident, as, and, and that would apply to residences as well. And you have had a problem with Sprint recently, right? Enforcement wise, not with this kind of thing, but with a different type of sign, right. which I'll get to, which we we would prohibit. Yeah. So, yep. Um, okay. So that's page eight, page nine, no change. Page ten, no change. Page eleven. Um, I made a slight revision to window signs. Uh, these would be uh, display uh, signs, t uh, temporary in nature, inside of a business, but on their window. Uh, we had it the way it was written before uh, is that it would it would have been 25 percent of the area of any one window or door, and 25 percent of the area of all windows and doors combined. So no window could have more than 25%, and then obviously the total of all windows, 25% is the combined area. We have businesses that um, cover, a cover a window and maybe don't cover the rest of the windows. So this was the, um, you know, the allowance for those kinds of situations. So that's the thought process. But, but you're not going to start enforcing liquor stores, right? This well, I, we have the 25% rule now. And we've had the 25% rule for a, for a number of years. So there, there is yeah, some... Yeah, but nobody anywhere enforces that rule, do they? Uh, he, he has not. It has not been a priority. Or anywhere else. I mean, any other town, I'm sure you have. Well, I don't know about every other town. Liquor stores so, just do it. Well, by their nature, they do tend to do that. But I'm not talking just about um, liquor stores. Uh, there are other stores no, that... No, I know. You can't. ...that do that as well, so... No, you can't limit it to liquor stores. <laughs> right. So that's the change to page 11. Page 12, one little change at the bottom. I added um, previously under the old draft, and this is something you should discuss, um, if the uh, school system wanted to put up a scoreboard or athlete at an athletic facility in the previous draft, it was completely uh, exempt from regulation. So now we've moved it into this category uh, so that it, at uh, least it has to be reviewed um, by the zoning officer and or the design review or historic district, depending on the zone that it's in. But it, we did not attach size limits or anything like that. Previously, it was completely exempt from anybody's review. Which Any standards we, to go by? <laughs> I mean, that's, so, so you're just saying that these are allowable. Yeah. They're allowable in the in a, in a residential, residential and conservation zone subject with a, permit. with a permit from the zoning officer. They would also require design review. And obviously, if they were in the historic district, which is pretty unlikely, they would also need their approval. Am I in the wrong area where you brought up last time that maybe the board and their construction signage was more than... We should have allowed. That's a little farther, uh, farther, yeah. farther on, I think. I'll, yep, I think that's farther on. On page 13, uh, permanent detached signs requiring a permit in business zones. Um, we were missing a category um, specifically for the village business district, so we added non-residential buildings in the village business uh, district uh, shall be limited to 24 square feet, 8 feet in height, I shall not have um, internal illumination and you're only allowed to have one. So we were missing that category from this section of the regulation. So that applies to detached signs requiring a permit from the zoning officer. And then at the bottom of that page, permanent wall signs. Uh, 
basically saying it has to be on the wall? It has to be on the wall and um, it, it has to be parallel to the wall, uh, not hang over, and uh, except if it's in the uh, village business district zone because in that zone we do allow projecting signs. Yeah, and that's the only zone we allow that in. Page 14, permanent wall signs requiring a permit in residential and conservation zones. This was just um, making the uh, permanent wall sign section uh, uh, consistent with the detached uh, uh, sign uh, section. So um, it was a matter of consistency between the two different types of signs. How do you it, measure the wall sign for open space? question um, I think there are other uses in the open space category let me just see here I mean I guess there has to be a building in order to, to and have a wall, wall right there yeah yeah. yeah yeah the open space is a, the open space is a series of uses let me just um, So in a open, an, an open space um, use uh, would also include a park which might have a structure, such as a you know, um, uh, gazebo or something like that. Um, wildlife sanctuaries or preserves could also have a structure. Uh, farms uh, could also have a structure. A nursery could have a structure. So uh, wall signs would be um, applicable in those situations. Um, so that was that section, page 15. Uh, once again, as I mentioned earlier, we, we had missed a category of signage for in the village business district zone, so non-residential non principal uses uh, permitted in the village business district, so we added uh, this category, and that pertains to, uh, once again, wall signs in the village business district zone. Uh, 50 square feet, maybe, um, maybe too much as a max. Um, so yeah, that, that was my reaction. So that what might is be, it now? Is I, it? We don't really have it now. Okay. So um, I put that in as a placeholder. So it's probably something we should um, discuss before uh, a decision is made on these. But I put that in there as a placeholder. They would they would still use the the same formula, the two square feet for every linear foot. Um, and I didn't get a chance to go out there and sort of see what what the inventory of wall signs are in the village business district. But um, so that might be something. Um, we but want to do talk you about. think the 50 is too much? Or? 50 is a lot, um, but... Seems like it to well, me. Lucky Loose has a pretty big sign. Yeah, there. he's got two, actually. Um, uh, Comstock Ferry has a couple of signs, so they, so it may, it may not be too much, but for the smaller average business, it's probably... But they probably wouldn't have enough wall space anyway to, to get to that. Right. So it may, may not be too bad. Um, Further on in page 15, under the permanent signs requiring a special permit in business zones, we talked about the electronic changeable message signs at the last meeting, so I clarified <coughs> in this section that that only pertains to detached signs, not wall signs, so, so those are only permitted as detached signs. I want to say here, while we can talk about the moving signs, that uh, Joe Hammer if you read the minutes too, it shows, came on very strong in our last meeting against allowing signs in town. And I think our town planner in his busy time at this point and his activity here in town, he has a lot going on, uh, was able to give us a review of these moving signs and I'm inclined to take the position we don't want them in town. And uh, so uh, even though proposed that we have continue to have them. So I think we want to discuss that or somehow drop it from these regulations and take it up at some future, near future time. Why? Why? What's the reason for that? Hmm? I, Joe feels very strongly. That I wasn't here. That's why I wasn't Yeah, yeah. Well, the minutes kind of suggest, say it, and I kind of support him in those minutes. Uh, his feelings are we don't need them, basically. Uh, am I saying it correctly? Uh, yeah. I mean, ba basically, he did come out and say that he, that's, that's why Peter put this other yeah, we can, report together. So I'm going to suggest. We can have that discussion after we after go, we go through, through these because things. that's a separate. 
That's a separate issue. Yeah, I want. Yeah, to I mean, it's a it's, it's, here. it's, it's an valid. issue that I know we need to discuss. But you know, there's a memo about it that we can talk about at length once we get through. Yeah, these. you want to get on, do it in that memo? Sure. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, so page 16, uh, in terms of off-premises <coughs> off signs, I just added a few minor things uh, that, that most of these off-premises signs do not require zoning uh, enforcement officer approval except when otherwise noted. There are a couple that do require, so it, this is a combination of two, but I added some language in here to that effect that uh, most of these don't require permit, some do, and I added uh, instances where they do require uh, the zoning officer to sign off. And that would be in instances um, of um, you know, certain special events, uh, also um, wayfinding, um, visitor, neighborhood identification signs, things like that. So th these were really just clarifications. And then I think the rest of the document, page 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22, there were no other changes. So that's why I characterized um, most of these as kind of minor clarifications. All right, so, so let's let's go back and talk about the 50 square feet on yep. page 15, right? Yep. And see if we can't uh, button up any of the other individual topics in this. So the 50 is in the village business district, non-residential. So you get some commercial space in the in the village district, and you've got 50 square feet. If you're not in the village district, you've got 125. Uh, pretty much. Oh, yep. Side, yep. Right? That's correct. So, so, is it too much? I, you know, maybe not. Right. Maybe, maybe not. We're talking I, about a big structure. We're talking about a big to... structure. And... I mean, I can go out and look if you if you're not going to vote on this tonight and get back to you with some you know, general feedback. Um, but I think 50, as I started to think about it, uh, for certain spaces if it, if it, is, is fine. Big enough, yeah. If the building's big enough, right? Yeah. It's got to be right. big enough to get that. And obviously the anyways, Comstock right? Ferry, which is probably the biggest structure yeah. down there, um, um, <clears throat> probably has more than that. So I think it's, in most cases, uh, plenty. Um, but it's still based on the formula. They can't have more than two square feet for each, each linear foot of tenant business frontage anyway. So I don't have a real uh, concern about people being hard-pressed so, so that's the only one that I yep. recall wanting to really. Yeah, the rest of it was really about. clarification. Um, okay, so well, we'll stick with the fifty for the time being. Yep. All right. Yeah. So that's almost. So the so I did also provide you with a memo as George was saying about the electronic uh, digital signs. We uh, were able to have our intern make a bunch of uh, phone calls. One of those phone calls revealed that. The uh, town of West Hartford had recently also researched this, so we were able to piggyback on um, their research, which was uh, which was helpful. So um, I did provide you with a uh, paragraph that talks about what your present regulations are. Uh, right now, your regulations are, uh, quite frankly, pretty wide open. Uh, they would allow somebody to come in, not that you would necessarily approve that, but they would allow somebody to come in um, apply for a special permit, uh, but they could apply for a special permit for uh, any zone in town. You don't limit uh, the language in your regulations to commercial zones, for example. So <coughs> I think regardless uh, of what you do, whether you think we should or shouldn't have uh, electronic signs, uh, the existing regulations need to be um, buttoned up and made more secure than they presently are because it kind of opens up uh, residential properties to these things, which I don't think is uh, the way uh, you want to go. Um, pages two and pages three provide a summary of the proposed language. Um, so the, in summary, the proposed language requires a special permit. You can only do it in the RC and GB zones. Uh, it would only allow one. It would limit the change to 12 seconds. Uh, it would limit the size of the electronic portion of the sign to 50% uh, of any uh, sign area. So if you had a, you're able to have a 24 square foot freestanding sign, uh, the electronic portion could only be 12, 12 square feet. Uh, there's language in there about requiring the brightness to be adjusted based on the uh, atmospheric uh, conditions. Uh, it does say that it must be turned off after business hours. Uh, it cannot face residential properties cannot have motion or animation, has to have a default setting, 
and uh, they must come in with very certain technical documents to, mm -hmm. to prove that the, the sign has all of these um, technical uh, abilities. These so, are key points you picked up out of those other regulations. No, these are the these are the standards that are in the draft regulation that you have mm -hmm. now. Let me say we went through this and we spent a lot of time and I was I think I was the only one on the committee who was totally against electronic signs. I hate them. But this was the kind of compromise of you recall was uh, this kind of a compromise that that I agreed to you know, during the committee when we were you know, discussing electronic signs. It's still yeah. I mean I think I think I remember everybody pretty much was like, I don't really like them. I'd prefer they not be there. Let me just throw something at you. As I look at who's got them and who doesn't have them in their regulations, mm -hmm. you consider for a moment that we basically have two major corridors in which we have commerce, right? And it's the Silestine and the, and, uh, the Berlin Turnpike. And to the north, Hartford allows them on both. And to the south, Rocky Hill allows them. Mm -hmm. Newington does not, interestingly, right? Yeah. Where, you know, if I considered the two roads, I'd be like, ah, Berlin Turnpike, maybe that's a little bit more, that's a little different, right? I might be inclined to say, you know, that might be okay, whereas Silas Dean, I'd love to try and say no, but it's actually reverse in terms of the other towns. I just noticed that as I'm reading it, and we'll throw that out. Yeah, I mean, and Newington might have been thinking <coughs> about their own downtown and Main Street more than thinking about the, the Berlin, Berlin Turnpike. Turnpike. True enough. And my True concern enough. about an absolute ban of them is that we've got a number of these that are already grandfathered in already, coupled with, with the fact that the, the absolute ban provides the temptation for <coughs> future commission to you know, start allowing them or, or basically overturning us. At least this way that we start out with a heavily regulated process for, for allowing them, which sets, you know, reasonable limitations on what, you know, what an applicant could expect uh, with having, you know, with proposing such a sign. So um, I would prefer, you know, like Dan and, and, and Joe to ban them all together, but uh, I, I, I just don't think in the climate that we're in, you know, historically that it's going to, that it would stand up for the long term. So the interesting um, feedback we got from those communities that do not permit them by regulation uh, was that they still have some. Uh, the folks just went to the ZBA and the ZBA gave them <laughs> with no standard. So I didn't put that in the memo because it was anecdotal and uh, you know I couldn't get th that kind of statistic. But most of the zoning officers basically say, um, so we don't allow them, but people have gone to ZBA and have successory, so we do have them. So that makes me even more concerned that if you don't, these, this draft regulation is very, very restrictive. It is restrictive. That it's was very, right. very restrictive. So, um, <laughs> you know, you're going from a presently a wide open scenario where people could come in and you, it would be subject to your discretion in essence to, to something that's very narrowed down, limited to two zones, uh, with all sorts of other caveats, pretty small signs. <coughs> Um, uh, so, uh, you know, I, I think at the, at the sign committee level, we kind of came to that conclusion that let's um, provide an opportunity, but make it very restrictive and let the Planning and Zoning Commission determine how they want to deal with these things going forward in the future. I came away completely against any kind of electronic sign, especially after we had a discussion with um, uh, the uh, City Fish, and then we had the the, uh, the safe company that came in, Electronic Sign. I was just totally against it, but I was convinced that dealing with it, and we had other people on the committee, not just planners, and uh, you know, that this was a reasonable way to handle this, and uh, it, it's it's a reasonable way to to regulate it without absolutely banning it. It, it gives us the control that we need, so we're not going to have a garish. Uh, Las Vegas type uh, Silestine Highway. Yeah, I mean, I, I think having the regulations and also restricting it to to those particular zones kind of isolates the issue. And um, you know, I, I'm not looking for ways to make the town uglier, but frankly, I don't. I'm not as offended by these things as as other people are.
there's one other aspect of of the of the proposed regs I just I want to point out, and uh, I'm going on the basis of uh, you know sort of historical memory on this, but on the on page <coughs> one, the, uh, uh, the detached sign, yep. where it says that, that where the basis of the sign is close to the ground, the close to the ground uh, you know, it is such it appears to be to me an um, an absence of, of specificity that could be challenged at some time, but I, I realize your, your desire for flexibility. I would, I would propose to insert the term reasonably, reasonably close to the ground, because the term reasonable uh, has a long history, in, in, at least in common law litigation, in terms of what, what that, what, you know, what falls within the scope of reasonableness versus unreasonability. And um, even though to you know, the, you know, the average layperson, you know, reasonably sounds like it's just you know, real weasel language, it does have you know, a, a, a history in, 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 the, you know, in terms of litigation in this country. So uh, I think that provides uh, uh, a way of, of Relating that part of of the definition to the uh, the second part, which which provides really the, the the standard that you're looking for, which is creating the appearance of a solid, low profile base, etc. So, um, and I I, I you know I defer to uh, uh, Rich on on this issue since he's in much more active practice than, than I've been for many years. But No, I think you have a good point. I mean, it is, it is sort of a subjective thing and you know, importing yeah, the concept of reason, reasonableness challenged. is always useful. Yeah. Mr. to say that sounds reasonable. Yeah, I, 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 it was on the tip of my tongue. Dude. I lost money well, on that. <laughs> weasel word. Was there anything we should uh, discuss in the comparison stuff? We went through pretty much the last time. The only other thing I was going to mention in the lighting, I flagged it the last time, but I didn't change it. The and it's already in the regulations, so but it probably shouldn't be in the lighting section. It should be in the sign section, but under. I can find it, uh, page 17. Um, we would be establishing under uh, num uh, si section L5, signs may be illuminated from 5 a.m. until 11 p.m. or one half hour past the close of business, whichever is later. A business that is open 24 hours per day is not required to turn off sign illumination. So. Uh, in the sign regulations, you would be adding this new provision, which limits um, the hours by which signs can be lit up. Therefore, they need to be turned off, um, you know, a half hour after the close of business or no later than 11 p.m. There is a uh, provision in the, when we adopted the lighting regulations back in 2005, so let me read that section just to see if it exactly matches, which it, hopefully it does. Um, let's see. Of course it doesn't match. Um, <laughs> in the lighting section, which is uh, 6.7 uh, subsection D. No, I'm sorry, that's the wrong section. Um, that's the... Um, Special. That's for that's for athletic fields. Um, but there is something in here. Pressure's on. Yeah. And I'm really <laughs> start uh, turning off the lights. I'm really. Uh, <laughs> that would be perfect. <laughs> here it is on the, on uh, six point seven uh, C requirements, unless. 
uh, otherwise permitted for safety or security or for business that operates all night. Lighting shall be controlled by automatic switching devices such as time clocks or combination motion detectors and photocells to permit extinguishing uh, outdoor lighting fixtures between 11 p.m. and dawn to reduce energy waste and mitigate nuisance skylighting consequences. I thought, however, there was something specific to signs, but that must be the section then. So basically, the lighting regulations say that between 11 p.m. and dawn, uh, lights are, you know, lights are technically, unless for safety reasons, but should be turned off. So, um, 24 hours. Yeah. Does a 24 hour business have to have all that stuff installed? Probably not. So that's a that's a provision that we just you know probably need to be thinking about when you ultimately get together to make sure you want to do that. I mean, it does put a uh, from this point out going forward. You know, would, the onus would be on staff to make sure that these mechanisms are in place with these signs and and if they don't comply, you know. So you, you probably want to talk about whether you want to get into that. Right. I mean, the, kind of the thing. Only, the only enforcement is when somebody complains about it, right? My next door neighbor needs a darn light on. It's that first residential property next to a commercial one, and they're complaining about the fact that they're leaving the light on, right? <clears throat> or if the planning and zoning meeting goes until you know 11:30, and I'm driving home, and someone's got their sign on, that kind of thing. So yeah, we're not going to be out there. <laughs> we're not going to be out there driving around looking for it, but. Um, so that may be something you want to <clears throat> debate and see if you really want to do that or not. But in your reading of it, to my ears, it sounds as though the two aren't really inconsistent. No. They're, they're, they're roughly, you know, one's covering one, one arena and the yep. other one's covering another arena. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it myself. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have a real problem with it the way it is either. Okay. Uh, even the five versus dawn, you know, yep. it's kind of yeah. Maybe make dawn if you're if you're redoing this. Maybe make these, you know, eleven to dawn, make it consistent while you're at it. Yep. All right. What is dawn? Half an hour before sunrise. Yes. <laughs> Reasonably. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Tom, do you have any uh, comments? Take it under advisement. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the hunting regulations? <laughs> All right. So this is this so I, is. I do I do want to say I did get a call from Commissioner Hammer, who uh, was hopeful he couldn't make it tonight. Was hopeful this would be carried over to the next meeting because as as George says, he does feel strongly oh, very much so. uh, about certain provisions, uh, primarily the electronic digital uh, regulations. Um, so he did. Uh, uh, inquire as to whether he thought this was going to be carried over um, and I think he was hopeful that it would be so that he could be at the next meeting and weigh in on this I just so I just want the the record to uh, d depending on how you go forward to reflect that he Can did he did call me two so. questions about that first of all um, is there t a tendency when you did those towns and it's about half and half uh, with them and without them. Yep. Is there a tendency to begin to adopt electronic moving sign stuff? I think you're, you are seeing a couple of towns um, recently have done that. I think uh, the recent ones were Cromwell, Rocky Hill, and Rocky Hill, who recently have gotten, and then West Hartford obviously went through the effort uh, to research didn't what's anything. going on and I don't think they did anything I'm not, I don't know all the details of what they You're did or sure still they might still be deliberating on it we didn't get into all of that we just we couldn't spend that much time on each individual town but so there is clearly it is an issue it is a hot topic uh, I've attended some recent you know sign um, you know workshops and they've had uh, breakout sessions on electronic signs you know from this you know they were primarily advocating on behalf of the sign industry why these are good and what the technology, how the technology has come a long way, and there are certain applications where, but and they did suggest many of the uh, provisions that we have in your regulations about brightness control and and those kinds of things. So um, it certainly uh, is a uh, an issue out there, and towns are obviously dealing with it um, as they you know individually 
see fit. But yeah, I, I think the survey results show that it's a 50-50 proposition. And uh, regardless of whether they have regulations, people are finding a way to, whether it's go through the ZBA or whatever it might be to, uh, you, know, th th you know, there's a time and a place for these things. And as long as you're, you know, it's still gonna be a special permit, you still have the discretion to say no. Uh, for example, I think both of the signs that we have in town now, electronic signs would not be permitted under these standards. So that's why I said earlier, it's a pretty, it's a pretty high bar now that if you, if you were to adopt this regulation, so it's, it's still pretty, the special effects, for example, that City Fish has on their sign would not be, those, that wouldn't be allowed in the- Also the, the conditions, as Rich pointed out on a many an occasion. Yeah. Uh, we took a lot of signage away from the building yep. in order to accommodate that, and it does sit down. And these are expensive. I mean, um, you know, the technology has come along, but these are still extremely expensive propositions. I think um, the, the owner of City Fish told me that it was it was a thirty to forty thousand dollar. Maybe higher. Yeah, think. it might have been. So, um, you know, no one's gonna, no one's gonna, you know, what, what we get people when design review tells them, you know, to do something minor that it's, you know, potentially a a deal breaker on some signs that are pretty much conventional signs. So someone to do this, it's a, it's a major investment. Right. Um, Another question I have along these same lines. Would, have you ever seen or have you heard that a business or an industry did not move in to a community because they wouldn't allow moving signs? No, I haven't. I haven't. Any discussion in professional no. materials that you received? No. Okay. I didn't, wouldn't think so, but I, I well, asked to say that question. when we reviewed this, um, we had a very number of people on the committee. Their group Oscar was on from the architectural committee. So, you know, we have, we have folks who have different experiences. And we all agreed, I think, Rich, that this was, we unanimously agreed that this was a reasonable way uh, to regulate this new type of, uh, you know, sign and, and what's emerging. Um, you know, nationwide, and this is a good way to handle it. And I, I'm going to stick to it. And I still feel that it was, uh, it's innocuous. You know, the, it's not going to be a big deal, even though you don't like them. No, I don't like them. But I think the way that the, it's it's regulated, just you know, we can say no, no science. But the, the way we have them regulated and limited in town, I, I think I don't think there it's going to be a big deal if someone comes in and tries to make an application to comply with it. This time will be innocuous. So, I really don't think it's going to be a problem. So, I mean, there's a straw, uh, straw count. I'm, I'm counting the heads here uh, about whether we would want to postpone this strictly to have a, a broader discussion about removing that part. And it would seem that, you know, there's at least five individuals here that would be voting, or maybe four, that I've been hearing from Ryan, that would be automatically say, <coughs> I'm not going to change my mind. I think it's a reasonable compromise. So is that really going to change? I mean, I want, I want to honor Joe's request or desire to talk There's about it. There's one way to honor Joe. But who's he going to turn? Who's he going to turn? I don't think yeah. he's going to turn me. I think it's not like he's going to turn Tom or others. Um, yeah, I mean, the only, the only other reason I would think to continue this is if Peter wants to look at the 50 square feet in the village business district or whatever, we're comfortable with that. So, I mean, just looking at on pictures of places like Comstock and the Creamery, you know, there's some big signs out there. So, you know, 50 might not be the, you know, the egregious, eye-poppingly large sign that we think it is, because, I mean, looks like Comstock between that and the Heirloom Market has like four very large wooden wall signs, you know, that might be 50 in total. And if you look at the size of the whole enterprise, you know, it's not big. We could divorce the electronic signage from your going ahead and approve all of what you've done except that. Uh, is that really? I don't, Maybe I don't you don't know, want to do that, that. Yeah. Peter. Yeah, I don't think it's a first shattering move to simply table it and, and ask that question and see if we get a broader grouping next time. But for some reason, I'm not sure why, and we're not even in the holidays yet. We're having a hard time getting people here, yeah. which is so strange. In my, it is. In my yeah. 10 years, we, we got people falling off the ends of the table, right? <laughs> and, and people who can't participate. And this is rather strange for the last two months. 
afternoon. Yeah, I mean, last time it was a Wednesday, which is always kind of a challenge for us. But, I, I, I think we have to do something about this quickly because we're, we're a sitting duck for something to come in uh, if we don't get something on the books. So I, I think that, if anything else, moving forward, the signs, I want to, it's because of this electronic signs issue that I really would like to get these things, personally get these regulations adopted because uh, you never know what's going to come down the pipe. Sure. <laughs> A well, contrary view. <laughs> and on the issue of the, the size of the wall signs in the village business district zone, I mean, I don't think, you know, Comstock's going to be coming in again anytime soon for additional signage. So they w if they were over the 50, they'd certainly be grandfathered. And I can't really think of any other tenants down there that would be eligible for uh, yeah i don't uh, you know i think so i think it's i think the 50 is given the situation out there reasonable even if i researched it uh, you know um yeah, the, re the real limitation yeah. is that that two feet yes for, you know and that's you know, and that's already um depending on you know the property uh, twice as much as they theoretically could have had anyway mm -hmm. so so it's already a generous change um so yeah I, I don't know that researching it is really gonna so i you know i'm okay if you wanted to go forward uh and then obviously if it became a problem we could deal with it down down the road but as i say i don't given the lay of the land down there i don't see a an issue so so i mean <laughs> you threw out a, a, a suggestion i think you were suggesting we could just leave it open for, for another time well that was Okay. If we thought we wanted to talk about the, the 50 square yeah. feet, and yeah. it doesn't sound like anybody wants to. Yeah. I was kind of convinced when you started talking about it that the 50 and it's half of or less than half of what's allowed elsewhere. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so I think the only issue before us is whether we 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 you know we postpone this uh, and uh, keep the issue open to allow. Commission members that aren't here tonight to, you know, to provide us their input at the next meeting. But we are. How short a time are we running in terms of? Uh, we're not. It's our own application. Yeah, it doesn't apply to us, so we're not under any time uh, constraints. But, but uh, you know, the point was made earlier. We've we've had three different hearings, and I think the same members haven't haven't come for the three times in a row. So. Whether that's going to change at the next meeting remains to be seen, but um, hopefully we won't end up with less at the next meeting. <laughs> be even worse off than we are. Yeah, we are heading into the holiday season. Yeah. You know, yeah. the December meetings are likely to be a little less attended. Right. So, so I personally, I, I'm kind of inclined to just do it because I, I don't think I would be swayed by a discussion. Yeah, I don't think the uh, I remember Joe's happen. remarks in the past about yeah, this. Right. It's and been he's been relatively consistent, <coughs> but uh, I haven't seen any real arguments that uh, contraindicate the, the, <laughs> the trend that I see in my own reasoning uh, to support these as, as, as they've been drafted and then modified and, and corrected and so forth over the course of the months and and weeks since right. this was first proposed to us. So I also don't really want this to be past five and one. So um, is everybody going to be okay with this, yeah. right? Do a what? Uh, closing the hearing and and approving these, right? I mean, you know. Right. You, you know then let's, has had yeah, we're here. Yeah. yeah, he has had it, right? Okay. So uh, the hearing is open. So would somebody make a motion to close the hearing? Was we got two of you. Thank you. I beat you. I feel like, I feel like I won. I don't know. <laughs> All right. All those. Give him a second. We'll see what the minutes. Yeah, you can have the second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. So the hearing is closed. Would somebody like to make a motion on the regulation change? Please. Make Rich, a motion that thank we. You. Um, adopt the proposed amendments to the Weathersfield sign regulations dated November 15th, 2018. 
adding the word reasonably in the definition of detached sign on the second line and the base of the sign is reasonably close to the ground adjacent to the sign. I'll second. Thank you. I don't remember any other specific. No, I, we highlighted a couple things, but I think at the end of the conversation, we left the. Oh, um, what about dawn? We left the hours, unless you wanted to. Um, so dawn is not used in this. Right. It's used in the. Right. So lighting section. So it's really not. Um, we'll have to deal with that as staff. Um, yeah, that's why I was suggesting yeah. if you put dawn here, then they're both consistent. You can argue about which one is oh, okay. which. All right. But, okay. Right. Um, yeah, but I mean, I don't know if you can like program your light to dawn. dawn. Get the dawn Fine. Hour. Um, I, and I and I certainly don't care enough to worry about it. Yeah. So the wording can stay just the way it okay. is too. And then the only thing, other thing we talked about was the 50 square feet in the for the uh, wall sign. And but I think we're okay with that in the village business district zone. And then I have not circled any other sections based on our conversation tonight. So okay. All right. So. Uh, with that one edit, then, uh, did I did I hear a second? Mm -hmm. No, I second. No Tommy seconded. Yeah. All right. So all those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. Opposed. So you didn't understand what I said. Yes, we did. <laughs> yep. All right. Okay, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you want me to do? You want that? He's yeah. got overwhelming support from the core. That's right. So. Good percentages. All right. <clears throat> Moving on to other business. <laughs> Make a motion to uh, approve, uh, and uh, there'll be a, a date change up at the top, right? Yes. These are the minutes? Yep. All right. Do we have enough people here well, we have to, to actually approve it? One, two, three, four. We don't, right? Yeah, it was not. There were only four people here last time? Four of the people here today? Uh, three. Yeah, right, only three. So we're not approving these minutes. Okay. I mean, t you know, and this is neither here nor there, but you don't have to have been at the meeting to vote on the minutes. Is that right? Yeah. You yeah. can read them or... I mean, uh, well, uh, you can just feel they're okay. Right, Rich? I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, you, All right. I mean, it makes, it doesn't make sense, but I mean, there's no legal requirement that you have been at the meeting. To vote out. <laughs> All right. All those in yes. favor say aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to me. I don't... Huh? Were there, Actually, were there we another set of minutes? That's the ones from before that because Which we tabled. Which ones were those? October 16th? The real October 16th <laughs> minutes. Okay. We'll put that on the next. Uh... No, I'll make a motion to approve okay. those. All right, we handed them out at the last yeah. time around, so. And they were they were fine. Okay. But we didn't vote on them because. Because there weren't enough people. <laughs> <laughs> Since that rule's out the window. <laughs> you, can't, you can't vote those? Yeah, yeah we can. And, and he just made a second. All those in oh. favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <laughs> good. Anything else we can approve? No, I was going <laughs> to vote. No, <laughs> good. going to vote no, just like Tom Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that interpretation of minutes. I like uh, yeah. Staff reports. So just a, uh, I think I sent an email out, but to December 12th is the uh, salute to business. You, I did send an email to you guys, so if, you, if you're going to attend that, uh, please uh, use the online uh, registration and sign up for it. It's always a nice uh, night to recognize some of the business uh, accomplishments of this past year. Um, you have to have a check for that. Uh, yeah, at some point. Yeah, you we'll can. We'll take cash, huh? Yeah, we'll take cash. I'll, I'll, I'll take your cash. Definitely take cash. Sure. Take delivery. Sure. PayPal. It's right. Um, we uh, just um, there are a couple of things in the on the horizon, uh, hopefully coming in. Um, so I think over the winter time, you may be busy with a couple of uh, projects without getting into the. Uh, details of those um, bigger things as well, or else you know yeah be bringing it to our attention. yeah potentially I've been meeting with a couple of uh, property owners and so there's some things um, you know percolating so hopefully uh, they will um, come forward over the winter time and um, you know rather than people waiting till spring and then you know all of a sudden they want to start construction um, so um, 
So I'll just leave leave it at uh, leave it at that. Is anything going on at the state highway garage on Goff Road? Because I've yeah, it's suddenly two construction trailers have appeared out in front. It's actually out of commission. I think they're using either Rocky Hill or um, so they're completely renovating it. Uh, they just applied. I don't even know why they applied for permits because it's a state facility, but they applied for building permits to do the interior demolition. So it's a complete redo of the facility. So. So that's why you probably saw those construction trailers show up. Okay. I thought maybe they were putting in a salt shed or something. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are these applications coming next time? Yeah, so the first one, I uh, hopefully will be in shape. It was supposed to be heard tonight. I think you saw a couple of folks in the back room who uh, uh, was supposed to be on the agenda tonight. They didn't uh, provide uh, the appropriate site plan for that. So that's the... Uh, the building that was carved off from Comstock Ferry, the bluish purple one in the front, um, that got converted back to single family residential. So now uh, it's been purchased by somebody. They want to do two different business spaces and then residential upstairs. Uh, so that will be coming in. Uh, you recall there was a parking lot in the back. They removed the parking lot in the back and made, you know, landscape beds. So they, they, they have to come in with a parking plan. Um, so that's um, going through historic district. And uh, so that should be that should be um, on your next agenda. And then we have a solar uh, rooftop solar on the Silestine Highway. Uh, so those are the only uh, two things for the next meeting. For purposes of getting the appropriate number of bodies here, I'll probably not be participating in 9.1. Peter, how come a solar roof thing comes in on a business? That's it, the way your the problem? That's the way your regulations are written we've had a couple of them but this is just uh yeah you have regulations that basically say if it's rooftop in a commercial zone unlike residential zones you guys have to approve it yeah we went through this remember we went through this analysis uh yeah, a year so or two ago i guess yeah. we're concerned about everything on the rooftop i mean hiding it so maybe that's why we well, this is, this that is one with an angle so it's going to be flat so you're not going to yeah, be able to really hide it but sounds strange well it is what your regulations say so I, mean, I voted on something like that one time. Actually, you voted to leave it as is, or you didn't vote on it, but I provided you with all that information. We went through that explanation. You guys wanted to leave it, leave it as it was. So. so next month we have meetings on the 4th and the 18th. Yes. Is that correct? Eight, well, there's nothing for the 18th yet, so maybe, maybe yeah. you won't have that one. Okay. I'll see what I can do about that. Okay. That's where I was going. Yep. <laughs> Well, and I, and I, there won't be one on the first, I presume, right? I can't remember what we decided for the new year, but obviously, yeah, probably not. That's going to be a little stuff. I won't be. That's going to be a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can do whatever you want with it. <laughs> All right. Uh, motion to close, please. Motion to adjourn. <coughs> Second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yes. Yes. Thank Great you. holiday, everybody. Good luck tomorrow. What time do you have to close? Five to one vote on motion. <laughs> when has that ever happened? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, only four people here to vote on the motion. Yeah. We can't leave. <laughs> It's Brock's tail.